I just realised um, a little more clearly last night how my own judgment is just a, a huge block yep. in front of me. Yeah. Um, and all I could do was get through to some pain and just a little flash with God this morning, but clearly I'm, it's taking me more time to break down this resistance. Yep. Um, Can I, I talk a bit about judgment? Thank you. Is that all right? Um, and then maybe you might want to still remember your question. <laughs> Let's uh, look at what's driving judgment, shall we? What, if we see, if we're going to understand our emotional self, we're going to have to, at some point, understand what's really going on in to- inside of ourselves, right? And that means becoming sensitive to what the, f- the flow of emotion within ourselves and what stops it. So, so you could say that the emotion, whatever the emotion is that you're feeling, starts to flow, right? So before it starts to flow, it's just energy that's locked up inside of you, energy, locked up inside of you. Once it's in motion, it becomes an emotion, something that is now passing through you. Now, once this emotion starts passing through you, what happens next? What happens internally next is the question, right? Now, when you judge, what happens? The emotion starts flowing, and what, 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 what's the feeling that comes up prior to judgment? Let yourself feel your judgments. <laughs> like, don't, don't just jump out with the answers. Just feel what, what, what happens inside of yourself. Right? Your emotion's flowing. You're starting to cry. You're starting to have tears come down your face, let's say. Or you're starting to shake. Or you're starting to, you know, actually... Feel the, the energy in motion inside of yourself, and then what happens? So, Matt, if we can start with, you, with the mic. Well, to start with, my desire to feel that feeling just, just like goes down very quickly. It does, but why? There's got to be something that makes it go down, isn't there? Can you see that? Yep, Laura? For me, it's a belief, a belief system. Okay, I agree. It's a belief of some kind. So there's a belief of some kind. And now, all beliefs are emotional, right? They're all emotions. All right, so what's happening, Mel? Um, I think for me, it's, and I'm not always conscious of it, but it's a lack of desire to choose something different. Yeah, but there's got... If you intellectually know that if you chose to go and feel this emotion that something is going to improve in your life, but emotionally you don't know that, which is what we're really saying, isn't it? Because if emotionally we knew it, we would do it. So the fact is we're not doing it, so emotionally we don't know that it's actually beneficial. So there's got to be something going on. We've got one emotion flowing. So let's say it's the emotion of grief. That starts to flow. That's now starting to flow. Now there's got to be something else happening to stop the flow of that emotion. It's got to be an emotion in itself, doesn't it? Does that agree? So, Matt? Matt? I'm just thinking on my own experience. A lot of the time I'll start having a thought of what someone else would think. Okay, so what's that? Fear, judgment. Fear. It's fear, fear, of, fear what of them. Them. Fear of them. What yeah. are they going to do with what I feel? What are, yeah. what are they going to think about what I'm feeling? What are they going to do after, the, after I feel in front of them? What are they going to do? Mm-hmm. So can you see the emotion of grief is flowing? Mm-hmm. And so this belief is causing an emotion of? Fear. Fear. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so the emotion starts flowing. The belief cuts it off. Right through the flow of the emotion of fear now. So what, what's the thing we need to do to write this problem? We've now got fear. What do we do? It's an emotion. So we allow the flow of the fear. Right? That's what we need to do. Right? If you do not do that, you will accept the belief. Right? The belief will become true to you. As soon as that belief becomes true, you are now shutting down the emotion because that belief says you've got to. The belief says you've got to shut down the emotion. 
So what is the main problem? You are not willing to feel fear when you go judgmental. So judgmental emotions are all about fears. They're all about what you're afraid of. Mary? And then Karina? So what I experience is, or what I don't experience, <laughs> is the, um, I begin to feel an emotion mm -hmm. and then I'm aware that I have a fear of how my parents, feeling how my parents judge that emotion. Yep. And I don't want to feel it, so I judge myself in the way that they would have judged me and it stops everything. Yep. That's so why, why don't you want to feel their judgment? Yeah, I'm afraid of the pain, the pain that I suppressed as a result of their judgment. Correct. The only reason why we don't allow fear to flow is because in the end, we don't like to experience pain. Because yeah. everything is going to be related to pain. The biggest problem that we have in the world we live in is that nobody wants to feel their pain. Most of you don't want to do it even in your relationship. That's why you're blaming the other person all the time. Right? Oh, but they did this and oh, but they did that. No. Oh, but they did this. And it's because we don't want to feel our pain. We want to blame our pain on something else. What caused all of the emotional suppression in our soul? How? How did our parents cause our emotional suppression in our soul? No, no, no. You think about it. What did they do to themselves? Give me a mic. Suppress their emotions? They suppress their own pain. That's what they did. Right? The choice that you make to suppress your pain is exactly the same choice that your parents made to suppress their pain, which created all of your pain. When I say all, no, half of your pain would be more accurate. You know where the other half came from? From yourself doing what? Unloving acts. Unloving acts. Right? That's the reason. They are the two only causes of pain. There's only those two causes of pain in there. So every time you choose to avoid pain, whatever justification you have for it, you are choosing to harm someone else right there and then, every single time. Right? And that's exactly what your parents did to you. So, can you see that our honour, the real problem, the real problem with all of our processing work is our honour, the honour we give to fear. And the resistance we have towards pain. Now, the two only problems we have processing all of our emotions. We honour fear and we resist pain. If you could develop somehow within yourself a desire to feel pain, that would be pretty powerful because then all of your resistance to your pain would be removed. And if you could also develop within yourself a feeling that you would no longer honour fear, you will no longer value fear over anything else. Now, both of the impediments to your processing emotion, your going through emotion, would be gone. Now, how much easier is that going to make your life? Heaps easier. If you want to progress towards God, you'll be able to feel an emotion. The fear might come up. The belief might start kicking in, but you don't honour it. You don't honour it emotionally anymore. Right? Instead, you just feel the fear that you have, another emotion. You just let it pass through you, the fear. 
And any pain associated with that fear might come up. There'll be grief under it and stuff. You'll let yourself feel that. And then you'll be back to feeling the original emotion. It'll just be like a small little detour and back to feeling the original emotion. Now, we've been doing a whole series of FAQs about emotions. In the second session, I think it is, we talk about what are the primary problems associated with feeling emotion. We mention the resistance to pain and the honour of fear are those primary problems that everyone's facing. Yeah. Laura? Um, when the emotion starts to flow and the belief system kicks in, mm -hmm. um, for me it feels like um, a, a cap that is almost like a, a betrayal of myself for a promise that I made in my childhood not to See feel. now, see what you do with a lot of your emotions. There's no way known you made promises to yourself in your childhood. Do you Did know I? why? No. Because you didn't have a developed enough mind to do so or developed enough moral state to do so. This is stuff that New Age spirits just feed you with crap. Uh, I, I, sorry, I mean in the sense of like if a teacher hit me in the classroom, I'd say don't cry, don't like, don't cry. Like. That's not a promise to yourself. Um, That's a response of fear. That's a feeling. It's not a promise. It's a feeling of fear. You're afraid uh, of crying because you might have violence. That's all it is. Okay. You, th you want to view it as a promise to yourself so that you can distance yourself from what it is emotionally. What it is emotionally is fear of somebody violently hurting you. It's fear of pain. <laughs> That's all it is. Nothing more complicated than that. So when, when, with, with the cap, how do you get to the flow of an emotion what, when the cap just... Cut? What's the cap? So the cap is, it feels like a... a, a, a the, uh, so that's fear, that numbness. Uh, yes, it's fear. It's not the promise you made to yourself. It's, it's not a little... I thought fear might be shaky. It, it's just not... It just goes like... It's fear yeah. and you don't want to feel the fear and that's the problem. That's where it all begins. You don't want to feel it. And you can call it promise to yourself but it's not a promise to yourself. It's more like a, a strong use of my will not to feel... The no. Th no. No. You were taught that every time you felt whatever that original emotion was, that you were going to be violently abused, pain, and you don't want to feel pain. You're afraid of pain. That's where all of your blockages are. There's no such thing as promises you made to yourself. They're just things that happened as a result of our desire to, know, to avoid pain. The, the, you could call it the beast part of ourselves, the human part of ourselves, not our soul, but the, the, you know, the physical part of ourselves, has a pain, physical pain response to certain things. And, and we need to develop a desire to feel it. Right now, most of you are sitting down and you have no idea what pain you're in. Right? And, and the reason why is because we've desensitized ourselves to feeling our pain. We, we don't want to feel our pain. That is our primary problem. What, if you, as a child, wanted to feel your pain, no matter how much pain came along, you would never have made what you call a promise, which I call fear, be the ascendant thing that controlled your emotion. You would have allowed the emotion to continue. But that's pretty hard for a child to do because it doesn't have a developed intellect, it doesn't have developed emotions, and it doesn't have developed moral morality until it's like well into its usually, you know, above seven or, or, or much greater than that. And as a result, anything that happened before then is going to be tainted with all these murky areas of morality, emotion, feelings, pain, and avoidance that have all it's been taught to have. So give yourself a break. It is just fear of pain. So, Everything yeah. you call a promise is fear of pain. So I, th I, I, would, I used to veer off with the belief system, which just takes me further away from... Yes, you I want to do that. Way. You want to do that. Because yeah. you know what doing that does? Well, it takes me the, away the from going The more you down. use your mind to go off and oh, analyse the belief system, think about the belief system, what is this belief system, eh? I promise I made to myself and all these other things, the more you do that, what are you doing? You're I'm using going. your intellect to avoid the fear 
feeling, that's all you're doing. Yeah, I, I, I am. A, yeah, I felt that I was working through belief systems. No, you're not. using your intellect to do exactly what you want to do at your soul level, which is avoid fear. Mm, which is my priority. Which is your priority, yes. And you need to see that as your priority. You go, okay, yeah, a lot of my life is all based around avoiding fear. A lot of my life is all based around pain. And, and when I say based around pain, based around your fear of pain. You see, if you could let yourself feel pain, then you wouldn't be afraid of it anymore. Right? But most of us are so afraid of it, we can't even let ourselves feel it. And, and this is our problem. We, because we're afraid of our pain and we don't want to feel our pain and we don't want to feel our fear, what we do is we search for other solutions. Yeah? You know what I mean by that? Uh, totally. You do that all the time, <laughs> all the time. right? So you know what I mean by that. You search for other solutions and if that means analysing my belief systems and thinking about this and working out my law of attraction events and working out all these other things, that's where I go because... All of that does, all that does is help me avoid the feeling of fear. So that's my addiction. That's the addiction. That's the addiction in play. So you think you're doing something that's beneficial to yourself and it's very I think counter. I'm working through my belief systems. Yeah, no, so you're not. That's how the belief system can only be worked through by feeling the fear. <laughs> that's, the, that's the irony. Does that make sense? That's the irony of all this. The, the only way that your belief system is going to change is by you feeling your fear. And, and when we go and intellectually analyse the belief system, work on the belief system, all those things, which are all responses to avoiding our fear, we are not feeling our fear. And the only thing that is going to help truth enter our soul, right, on that same subject is by releasing the fear that exists on that subject in our soul. That's the only thing that's going to help the shift. The, the, the soul has to release one thing in order for the other thing to come into it. Right? And when you're analysing your belief and doing all those things, there's no release of anything going on. And because there's no release of anything going on, there is no hope of the truth entering you on that subject. And the truth can't enter you on the subject until the fear has been released. The error, remember fear is error, needing to be released. And without the error being released, the truth cannot enter. The emotion will not flow. And while that happens, it doesn't matter how much intellectual work you do, how much study you have, how much listening you do, how much talking you do, anything, it's all driven by the avoidance of the fear. It's all a way, a method that we have to avoid the feeling of the actual emotion we need to feel, which would actually heal us if we allowed ourselves to feel it. And this is where we do many counterintuitive things. We think that analysing it all, working it all out, thinking about our belief systems, and all, all of your belief systems are not thoughts. All of them. They are all Feelings that are false and error-based and therefore there would be fear associated with every single one of them. Every one of them is a feeling. Right? Not a single one of them is a thought. They produce thoughts, but they're all feelings. So unless one of those feelings exits your soul by you feeling it, by you experiencing it, by you going through the emotion of it, the truth on that same thing can't enter your soul. And so while we go around on this intellectual route, examining all of the different possibilities and potentials, philosophizing and reasoning and discussing and all of that, we're actually not aware that we're doing all of that in order to avoid the one thing that will actually help us. Right. Now, you, a person like yourself, who has been treated quite badly as a child, Laura, are going to have lots of ways of doing this. That's the hard part. The hard part is deconstructing the ways and methods that you have to avoid the feeling of it. Well, it's already scary to think that I'm really running out of addictions. Like, the, 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 all the, the physical, like, you know. But 
Yep. It's actually a scary place to now really know that, wow, to write my belief systems, to feel about my belief systems is another addiction and an avoidance. Correct. Yeah, so what we do initially when we look at our addictions is we look at the physical ones, right? Which are all to do with substances, abuses like, you know, food, alcohol, you know, drugs, um, pills, tele, tele, sex, all those kind of things. And all of those, of course, are driven by all of our emotional addictions, right? Right? And those emotional addictions, what created the avoidance of our emotional addictions, what created our physical addictions. The thing about physical addictions is they are um, the fail-safe, if I can use that word. What I mean by that is that whenever we have a physical addiction that's met through a physical substance, we don't have to rely on a person. And that's great because people are unreliable, right? Whereas substances are reliable. You get the same. Like, how many of you ladies know chocolate is the best way to feel good for a short period of time? Yeah? Well, you do know that. Like, that's why you take it, right? So you know that's the solution every time. So that's why you want the chocolate. Because, so it's more reliable than your husband or your wife or your family or your friends in making you feel good for a short period of time. Right? That's the thing about physical addictions is the substances are more reliable than the people. But once we get rid of the substances, the substance-based addictions, we're left with these emotional addictions, which are all about people, what you do and what you can get from people in order to avoid your fear of your pain. Right? Right? Now, many of the things we do emotionally are all driven by this desire to avoid our pain. So this desire for you to analyse intellectually everything about your belief systems rather than feel what your belief systems are is actually an emotional addiction that helps you avoid pain. There's a little person inside of you who learnt at a very young age that if you could do all this intellectual gymnastics, right, you'd get away from the fear. And it would make you feel like you're in control. And it's almost like when I hear you speak and, and, and then, you know, like look at the belief systems, then I take that but use it as a way, uh, the way that I want to use it. Many people are doing this. So many people hear, like when I talk, you know, somebody asks me about their emotions and I tell the person exactly what their emotions are, they go, oh, AJ analysed that person. No, I didn't. I've never analysed a person in my entire life. Do you know what I do? I feel the person. <laughs> And all I do is I tell back to them what I feel from them. That's all I do. All right? But the average person doesn't see it that way. You know what they see it as? And an analysis, an intellectual process that I go through, which I don't go through, by the way. All right? An intellectual process of analysis. And so they go, oh, AJ does that, so that's what I'll do. I'll do that with all of my emotions. I'll analyse them all, go through them all. You know, check off the boxes and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure people have put that before priority of God. Like they think that they're getting closer to God, but their prior, it's all based on a fear of trying to sort the, their, or their addiction, whatever yeah. it is, but yeah. all that's an avoidance. Yeah, I don't do that. I don't do any of that. Right? But, but because I can feel what a person feels it and be quite accurate with it pretty much all the time, a per, generally people think that that's what I'm doing. But that's only because that's what you do. <laughs> you know, we often judge another person what they does ba they, on what they do based on what we would do in the same circumstance or situation. And the reality is, yes, a lot of people, most people in fact, when it comes to dealing with emotions, analyse them. But analy analysing your emotion is a mental activity that is usually undertaken to avoid the emotion. And if we're not honest about the desire to avoid the emotion, we're not honest about why all this intellectual activity is now going on. And it's all going on because I'm wanting to avoid the feeling, the feeling of fear that has now come up in me and the fear is always about being afraid of pain. And a lot of people say, well, what about if I'm afraid of pleasure? No, at some point in your past, if, if you've been afraid, if you're afraid of pleasure now, then at some point in your past, that thing was painful. Had to have been. Right? 
So, for example, a, a, a woman who's afraid of sex, she says, but that's pleasure. No, for many women, that's not pleasure at all. That's pain because it reminds them of things that have happened to them in their childhood with their dad or their granddad or, you know, with other people. And it's painful. It's painful. Right? Not pleasure. It's pain. And so that's why they don't want to feel it. That's the fear. Right? Yep. So just because it might be pleasurable now, because, we're, because everything is through the filter of the emotion of what happened in the past, unless it's gone from the past, you're going to think it's painful. So many women, for example, feel it's painful to be involved in sexual activity. Well, I know for myself, when I'm happy, my mum was very jealous and I was so happiness is... So happiness, there's a pain associated really, with yeah. happiness. So it's not the happiness that causes your pain, it's the fact of your mum's projection of rage and jealousy that you're unwilling to feel that causes your pain. Do you see? You see, the, the pleasure-based emotions, there had to have been some pain associated with them in the past for us to be so afraid of them. Yeah. Now, if we, under, if we understand all of that from an emotional perspective about what's going on in our soul, then we'll see that our primary problem that we have is whenever we go intellectual, it's because we're using it as a technique to avoid the feeling of emotion. And it's a very powerful technique. That's why many people use it, right? You know? Of course, many people use other techniques too. You know, go and get the addiction met. That, that avoids the emotion. It avoids the pain, right? Deny everything. You get to deny all the pain then. Of course, you get to deny all your pleasure as well and a lot of other things, but a lot of other truth gets denied and everything else gets shut down, but, you know, who cares about that? All we're worried about is shutting down the pain, right? And this is where our focus has become distorted. We've become distorted in that we want to shut down our pain when the reality is we need to learn to love our pain, accept it and move through it and release it. That, that needs to be our focus. And, and um, learning how to develop a desire to feel um, like you're going into the very place you don't want to go. So it's a, it's, it's a desire to go into a place. Yeah, well, you won't go there while you feel you, you don't want to go there. The reality is you won't. You, you need to let go of the emotion that causes you to feel you don't want to go there. And that is, a, again, an emotional process. Fear is always the reason why you don't want to go there. So, so you see, what I see people doing over and over again is they ask me a question, a question, a question about their emotions, about their emotions, about their emotions. And in the end, there's almost one answer, well, two, actually, answers, but one primary answer is fear. You don't want to feel it. <laughs> Because if you wanted to feel that, you'd be able to feel everything else. That's the main answer. There's only one other answer, is desire, a lack of it. There are the only two reasons why we don't do anything. Does that make sense? We either have a lack of desire or we are terrified. Thanks, Catherine. Don't we get to a stage um, where there's nothing we can do to actually stop the emotion? Of course. If yes, it, it, it's just... It, no, it's not an automatic place, it. though, Catherine. It's not an automatic place. There had to have been some things that you've stopped doing before you reached that place. You see, it's like we can't assume that... Like, I know people in the spirit world who have been there for 20,000 years, still in, in lots of darkness and pain, and they have no desire to work through their emotion and also no desire to feel their pain. Now, why has it taken them 20,000 years? Well, fear and they don't want to do it. Okay, so there's these two aspects of fear, they don't want to do it. So, so they haven't, through 20,000 years of life, got to the point where it's automatically coming out of them. But the pain becomes so great, there's nothing else you can do but go into the emotion. I agree. If you have a desire to go into the emotion, and that's a big if. Uh, there's people whose pains are so great and they still have no desire to go into emotion, so they hold that place. And while they hold that place, they hold that place, they hold that place. Many of you are doing that right now, so you can't say that it won't happen in the future. You hold that place, hold that place, hold that place. You use your will. You, are, you have a very strong desire to use your will to avoid 
the feeling of pain and the, the feeling of fear. And while that will is exercised in that direction, you will not feel it. It doesn't matter how much pain you have. Mm, I, I just kind of find, you know, the older you get, the more pa pain, <coughs> yeah. the more pain that you have, yeah. physical and yeah. emotional. Yeah. That there's, yeah. That, that you get to a point where you've submitted to it. Yes. But a lot of people don't. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does build up. But yeah, but a lot of people don't. See, a lot of people in your position, what would they be doing? They'd go to a doctor, get as many pills as they possibly can, get some drugs that they can do to tune away from the pain, make, calm down the fear, calm down the depression, calm down the whatever it is that they're feeling, and they end up, you know, what, what do you notice what, for most people on the planet in the Western world at the moment with, with regard to them being 70 or 80? They've got like a whole drawer of pills, right, that they pop for all sorts of things. Why is all of that happening? It's because they have a fear of pain, right? Popping all of those things. And they can stay in that state now on earth because they've got all this extra assistance. But in the spirit world, you know, you can feed your addictions forever if you wanted to, if you choose to. It all depends on your choice. So this is where your will to make a different choice is so important. Exercising your will to make a different choice. You have exercised your will partially, partially that's exactly to make right. a different choice. Not fully yet, no, because you're still contemplating the possibility of maybe going to some medical solution or whatever. Yes. yes. So you have not yet exercised your will fully in that direction, but you've made it partially. You... Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, the average person doesn't do that. On earth, doesn't even make a partial choice. There is just no choice in their mind. Avoid pain at all costs, get some physical way of doing that or some emotional way of doing that and focus on those things and only do that for the rest of my life. That's the way the average person thinks. This is why we have this dominant feeling on the planet of forget about the past. It doesn't help you going back to the past. Right? It doesn't help you to analyse your emo to feel your emotions. It doesn't help you. Don't even try it. Take a pill instead. Right? Why is all of that? That is a huge, if you think about it, almost everybody you probably know thinks that way. Why? Because no one wants to face the fear of their pain. And the way the world is going to change is by having a lot of people starting to face the fear of their pain and developing a desire to actually feel their pain and experience their pain and work through their pain rather than just avoiding it. That's how change is going to occur. So with regard to judgment, which was what started all this off, can you see that judgment is just a way of shutting yourself down? And many of us like it because it's an intellectual exercise we undertake so that we can avoid the emotion. We accept the judgment without any confrontation of the judgment because we want to shut down. The feeling inside of us is, I want to avoid my pain. Give me a reason. Give me a reason to avoid my pain. Oh, judgment. Bang. That, that is a reason. That's a valid reason I can use to avoid my pain, so I use it. Intellectual song and dances. Uh, a way to avoid my pain, so I use that. Getting my addictions met, a way to avoid my pain, so I use that. Right? Taking some pills, doing physical substances to avoid my pain, so I use that. I'll do anything. Like, we are sluts when it comes to avoiding our pain. Right? Do you know what I mean? You do anything for the sake of it. Right? That's the reality. Yeah? And, and this is what we've got to stop doing. We've got to stop going, oh, we've got to stop making the moral compromise. Right? Every time we revert to judgment and allow the judgment to exist, we are reverting to a moral compromise that stops us from feeling our pain. Every time we go through the process of intellectual justification and intellectual reasoning, we are already involved in a moral compromise avoiding our pain. And we've got to stop these compromises that we make on our soul 
and just know and honour the fact that we've got to go through it. Now, I'm telling you this. Now, the only reason why I'm telling you this is because I've done this. And I know for certain. You don't necessarily know for certain. That's why you want to go through the other ones. All the, but I can guarantee to you, you can spend the next 25 years going through every opportunity to be judgment of your own emotion, every opportunity to intellectually reason around your own emotion, every opportunity to get your addiction met, and every opportunity to do everything else, and you'll be no closer to God than you are today. I can guarantee that to you. But you can try it because you've got free will. You're allowed to do it and all those things. You're allowed to try it all for yourself and work it all out. Or you can listen to somebody who's already done it and say, and say well, it probably is not much point me doing it. You can have some trust in that. You can do one of those things. But for the majority of us, we don't like listening to other people. And we've got to try at least one or two of them ourselves. All right? So we do. And then 10 years later, when we haven't made the progress we were hoping to have made, we then realise, well, maybe that hasn't worked, if we're honest with ourselves. And judgment is just another one of these methods that we use, right? And sure, it came from our childhood and everything, but we now use it as justification just like our parents used it as a justification to avoid their emotions. They judged you so that they could avoid their pain. They judged you, they blamed you for their pain. They blamed you every time you did something that triggered their pain and they had to feel something and they didn't want to feel it so they judged you. You learnt to judge yourself. But you need to understand it's just an addiction. It's an addiction used to avoid the feeling of fear of your pain. That's all it is. So, so because it's an intellectual thing, mm -hmm. like it's a choice, I, I need to... I could strengthen... It's not an intellectual thing. The judgment exists inside of you emotionally. Oh, I'm emotional. not suggesting it's intellectual. Yeah. I was talking to Laura about the intellectual justifications she uses personally, but judgment is not an intellectual thing, it's an emotional thing. So at that point I could use my mind to recognise that. You could say, yes, I can see, here we go, judgment again. All I'm doing here is repeating my own parents' judgments of me, to me, and why am I doing this? Why did they do it? They did it to avoid their pain, and all I'm doing is doing it to avoid mine. What I need to do is feel, instead is feel, yeah, they judged me and I didn't deserve it. There's some pain I can feel. <laughs> so, I mean, straight away, there's some pain I can feel. Take away the judgment as a justification or an addiction and now you've got the fear back again. All right? And the fear's back now. Let's choose to feel that. You see, you wouldn't revert to the judgment. You wouldn't revert to these other things unless you were already trying to avoid the fear and you wanted a way to avoid it. Right? If you chose to feel the fear instead, then most of these other things wouldn't happen. And I wouldn't have so much physical pain. Of course. So I feel that I'm more willing to feel physical pain than I am to feel fear. Uh, yes, most people are actually more willing to feel physical pain than emotional pain. That is very true. Yep. You, you, the average person on this planet, it depends how intense the physical pain is, of course. Remember that most of your pain, emotional pain, comes from, often comes from physical pain in your childhood that was shut down because your parents didn't want you to feel it. All right? So, you know, every time you started to cry because you hurt yourself, what did mum and dad do? There, there, you don't have to cry, you know, patch that up, you know, don't stop crying. I'll give you something to cry about, <laughs> you know, whatever it is they chose to shut you down. And so you shut down from that experience, right? And that's how you became afraid of pain. Because before then you weren't afraid of pain. Before then you just felt it. You look at the average child who doesn't get shut down when they injure themselves. Five minutes later they're running around and half their leg's falling off and they're still running around half the time, you know. <laughs> you know, they go, we can even have a broken leg and still try to run around. Yeah, I've noticed that if, I, if I'm in my desire and I hurt myself, if I stop and feel, then I don't even feel that bruise or anything later. Correct. And, and it also heals very rapidly, yes. straight away. But I've noticed that, like this morning, for example, I spent some time praying, lying, feeling, praying. And I remember you saying, even if nothing happens, spend time with God. And so I started to feel an emotion and just like a flash and of, of what I felt was God, but then 
judgment and then... So judgment was the desire to avoid, avoid. Mm -hmm. right? And it and comes then, from somewhere emotionally. Yeah. And then I was real, and I'm just, oh, fear, and, but then physical pain. And so I spent quite some time feeling this physical pain. Yep. Physical, physical pain that come, keeps recurring is always the result of the suppression of fear. You will find that in the end. Physical pain that keeps reoccurring is always the result of the suppression of fear. But, so I need, if that's all I will let myself feel at this point, at certain times, mm -hmm. then that's a worthy thing to feel. Of course. Because gradually, like sometimes it's like, hmm, like this morning, well, I wanted to come here too. And so then but I also felt a desire to move and change what I was doing. So I felt that there was definitely a change. I, I had less pain. Yep. I was ready for something else then. Yeah. But um, it, sometimes this is what happens. Like I feel blocked at the moment because this is, that can be the process. And then, then suddenly without, without any warning, I can maybe get into the emotion and connect to God. Yeah. But... So sort take those lately, opportunities. There when seems they come. to be more more distance between that. Of course, because there's more and more things that you're getting exposed that you're resistant to. You see, when you begin this process, often you have a bit of a honeymoon period where you get into this emotion or that emotion. All of those emotions are your easy ones. You might think they're hard at the time, but they're actually your easy ones. The ones that are the really hardest to get into are the ones you're terrified of. They're the hardest to get into. That's where my judgment goes up more. Of course, because your terror, terror wants you to judge because that way you get to avoid the feeling of the pain. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a very vicious so, circle. So you've got to stop the judgment. That's just an addiction. Stop it. Tell yourself God's truth on that subject. Most of the time we do know God's truth on the subject. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm even doing that, but it's like not... <laughs> yeah, but, but you understand it's all because of the reluctance to feel fear, the reluctance to feel terror. This is our main problem. We don't want to feel the fear. We don't want to feel the pain. Mm. We're reluctant to do it. When we're reluctant to do it, what do we do? We do anything else other than it. Mm. We'll, we'll justify it. We'll shift the blame onto someone else. We'll do anything. We'll minimise it. Mm. We'll, we'll say it's not there anymore when it still is. We'll do anything to avoid it. Mm. And we've got to stop doing that. And the only person that can stop doing that is you. God can't stop you from doing that. God's already trying to give you maximum help to stop it, but we're just justifying it, saying, no, that's the way I want to go, that's the way I want to go. We're honouring. We're honouring our fear and we're resistive to our pain. And that's our biggest problems. Right? If, you, if you stopped honouring your fear and stopped being resistive to pain, then you'd probably feel your pain or your fear, depending on which one you needed to feel at the time. And either one is going to help you the next time you come to feeling one of these other emotions which will heal you. Remember, it's the passing through you of these emotions, the grieving-based emotions, that's going to heal you emotionally. Of course, it doesn't develop your relationship with God because develop a relationship with God depends on desire. Right? But it does help you with desire. Every time you confront a fear, that helps you with desire. It means that you'll, if you have a desire, it'll be able to be present more. If you have one. If you don't have one, you'll in the end see you don't have one. And then you'd have to develop the desire using some method, which is all about getting to know somebody, getting to feel somebody, get, having the interaction with somebody. Mm. And that's the part that I feel a lot of us are also missing. Because we're not wanting to have this personal interaction with God, really. Most of us don't even think that it can happen, that it's even real. Most of us don't even believe in God, if we're honest with ourselves. Or if we do, we believe that God's a punishing, vindictive bastard who's going to oppress us for the rest of our life. That's basically what you know, religion teaches you. And so we don't feel. And, and, and of course we don't develop a desire for God. But if we do both, if we develop these willingness to feel these two problematic emotions, they're only problems because we honour them. We put them above our relationship with God. We put them above our relationship with other people. We put them above our relationship with ourselves. We, we honour them. We, we worship them. Let's bow down, to, bow down to them. Don't we? 
The, the average person on this planet bows down to pain. You know, wh what I mean by that is whenever they have pain to feel, they'll do almost anything to avoid it. The average person on this planet is exactly the same with terror. If you ask them to feel it, they say, don't be stupid. I'm not feeling terror. They'll do anything to suppress and avoid it. Right? The, the things that you will do anything for, they're your gods. That's your god. Yeah. What is the time? Yeah. I'd probably like to finish now, if that's okay with everyone. Um, I think we've discussed a lot about understanding the emotional self and also from a practical perspective what's happening to most of us. What's happening to most of us is we don't understand the importance of feeling fear <laughs> in our lives and we don't understand the importance of allowing pain in our lives and, and desiring to actually work through our pain. We just don't get the importance of it. And the third thing we don't get the importance of, which is probably the most important thing, and that, and that is we don't get the importance of developing a relationship with God through desire. And they're, they're, they're the three things that are affecting us the most. And while they affect us, anything we talk about God is going to go over our head. Anything we talk about emotions, over our head. And almost any discussion we have at all about divine truth is over our head while we're living in that place. And this is why many of you have hit the point of saturation with truth. You hit the point of saturation with truth when your fear of your pain has increased to such a level that you don't care anymore about truth. And this is why we stop doing presentations up our way in Queensland, because the fear the, in the average person coming to seminars there, the fear of their own pain has increased to such a point that they, and they haven't released it, has increased to such a point that they no longer care about receiving any truth. It doesn't matter anymore. Go and have a life with, that you don't have to face these things, uh, is the way most people feel. And that's what many of them are doing, actually. Many of them have told us, actually, that's what they're doing. I'm much happier now. I get all my addictions met. This is the subtext. <laughs> I get all my addictions met and everything's nice. You know, I was overthinking things before. Oh, I agree with that, overthinking things. And, you know, I was feeling too much. I don't agree with that. You weren't feeling enough. And, you know, and all these kind of things about, you know, how now they're happier and everything. They're not happier. They're not happier. They just have reverted to what the fear has wanted them to do all along. That's what they've done. Just got one more. Yep. It's just about God. In regards to sort of making God your desire, and yeah. it, it would soften the fear and soften the pain if you have him as a desire and have God as a desire. Yeah, see. Understanding God more. You've got to be very careful because if that's why you want a relationship with God, it's already distorted. Okay. If, you, if the reason why you want a relationship with God is so that you can soften your peer, fear and soften your pain, then you've already got a distorted relationship with God. God's not going to enter that relationship. There's a selfish desire driving the desire for the relationship. And the selfish desire is to make fear and pain easier to handle. Yeah, because I've got blockages in fear and pain. Yeah. But if I allowed God to help me, is that... That's is that certainly different. Different? Yeah, yeah okay. certainly different. See, what, the question we've got to ask ourselves is, what is motivating our relationship with God? For many of us... We only have selfish motivations in any relationship, including our relationship with God. We want God to take away our pain. We want God to make us feel safe, God to make us feel secure, God to make us feel like everything's okay, God to make us know, know everything and avoid all of our terrors and fears. And uh, that's what we want from God. Now, I suggest to you that that, that relationship with God is impossible because God won't engage it. Because it's not driven by a pure longing for love. It's, it's driven by all these negative things, a, a desire to avoid pain, a desire to avoid grief, a desire to avoid fear. And, and if our desires are such that we want to avoid by having a relationship with God, then a relationship with God is not going to be possible. In regards to religious, like there's so many religion, religious people out there in regards to different gods or what yep. they perceive. If you wanted to sort of, engaging God a lot more and understand 
God, mm-hmm. how would you do it? Because I'm from Melbourne. Like I've got, <laughs> you know, I listen to to your teachings all the time, and and to engage the people who are wanting to speak the truth. It's very hard with my interaction with people. Mm-hmm. No one really wants to to know. Like, how yep. would I sort of develop? I've spent most of my time with myself. Okay, so that's. That's like something I, that I enjoy doing. Yeah, I don't, I don't to. try to convince anybody else what I've no, learnt no, no, about God. The only reason why I'm here is because I get asked to come. So, so I first focus on my personal relationship with God and spend time with God by yourself. That's how you develop a relationship. You know, if you were developing a relationship with anybody else, you, you'd probably do the same, right? If you had a woman in your life that you wanted to you know, enter a relationship with, what you'd probably do is... You'd want to spend some time by yourself with her, you. get to know her, get to feel, feel what she feels, hear, listen to her if you can. And, and when I say if you can, obviously with many of us, we, we don't listen enough and that's why we can't hear God. And, and so, but, but we need to learn to do these things. And then I would also spend time with people who know about God. And this is, there's not many people on earth who know about God. Mm-hmm. So what I would suggest there is read the books of, from people who know about God. And those books are two books, uh, two, yeah. two forms mm-hmm. of books in particular. One is the Paget messages themselves, which are a long list of messages, many of which are about God. And then the second series of books are the books by Robert James Lees, which are a long list of discussions about God's nature and God's character and God's personality and all those kind of things. That's what I would do mm-hmm. with my time. And, one, and that's what I do with my time, as Mary knows. Like, I still read those books Thank you. That's every day. Because they give me the... the you know, I don't get to spend much time with people who have this love for God, but I do get to then spend time then with these people who are in the spirit world who have a love for God, and that helps me with my relationship with God. Thank you. So that's what I do. Thank you, guys. So, um, some, so how many of you are coming to the assistance group? Uh, yep, fair few of you. Yep. So we'll see you there, I suppose. Um, yeah, um, you're in the first or the second one, I gather, one of the two. Um, we're, we're developing a program or trying to develop a program which on one hand confronts, you know, the reasons why we're blocked and on the other hand tries to confront the, the development of, you know, your relationship with God. So that's what we're attempting to do. We're trying to make it practical. There'll be a fair bit of homework to do um, for you to work your way through specific things and find out about yourself more and find out about God more. And there'll also be some fun things to do as well that we're planning to hopefully hopefully, um, expose some of the addictions and so forth. And we've developed, Mary's developed this wonderful food program to help uh, confront some of your addictions as well. So um, that's all a part of being with us for those eight days. So we hope you enjoy that. Yeah. Thanks for your time today, guys.